Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Manchester United have a 90% chance of signing Hakan Kalahanoglu next summer. He has just seven months left on his current contract. He says we can discuss terms in January and work out a deal. Now Christian Fark from Build said that it's very, very likely that Hakan Kalahanoglu will join Manchester United next summer. And we have been in advanced talks with his agent. Now, it came out last month saying that Man United were prepared to offer him a five-year contract. Atletico Madrid and Juventus have also been interested in him. Now, he has been at AC Milan for quite a few years. He's made over 100 appearances in the Serie A. AC Milan paid around £20 million for him from Bayer Leverkusen. Before he was at Bayer Leverkusen, he was at Hamburger. And before Hamburger, he was at Karlsruhe. Hakan Kalahanoglu is the age of 26, so he's still in his prime. And he's predominantly a winger. So this is good news from a Manchester United perspective. Now, I want to delve into some news on Donny van der Beek. So according to Calcio Mercato... Juventus are lining up a move for Donny van der Beek next summer. And they're considering a loan with an option to buy or an obligation to buy for around 30 odd million pounds. Juventus want to reunite him with Matthias De Ligt. We only signed Donny van der Beek two months ago. We got him in a deal worth £40 million from Ajax. He's not yet made his full Premier League debut for the football club. <coughs> I'm hopeful that he can make his full Premier League debut tomorrow against Southampton. But he has been getting his opportunities in Europe. Um, he did start against Istanbul Basakshia. Um, he was playing in a deeper role. That's his predominant position. Obviously, when we started him against RB Leipzig, we put him in that number 10 role. He can play in like three different roles. Uh, Donny van der Beek revealed during the international break that Solskjaer told him he'll have to remain patient and wait for his opportunities. But Donny van der Beek did make a confession regarding his playing time, saying that he would have loved to have played a lot more at Manchester United this season. He's only played like 474 minutes of football. So that is the breaking news on him. But I think Donny van der Beek wants to stay at Manchester United. Now, it's good that we are making plans for next year. Obviously, we're looking to make more signings. There has been a lot of players on our agenda. I obviously give you the news on Usman Dembele yesterday. And it says that Man United are not giving up hope on signing Usman Dembele on loan in January. Uh, Fabrizio Romano confirmed that he is still a target for Manchester United. We inquired about getting him on loan during the summer transfer window. Now, I think Barcelona have said that they want around £67 million for Usman Dembele. Liverpool were also interested in him. Now, my element of concern about him is injury prone. He sustained a few injuries at Barcelona. Barcelona recently paid £4.4 million to Borussia Dortmund because he's made over 50 appearances for Barcelona. He's enjoyed a good three years or so now with them. He's got a contract with Barca until 2022. 
Back in 2017, Barcelona did get him in a deal worth £135 million from Dortmund. Barca paid like £90-odd million up front. He is the age of 23. He said a few weeks ago that he could be available for £45 million in January. But you can play him on the left flank, you can play him on the right flank, and I think you can also play him up top. Now, Jaden Sancho, he's obviously on our agenda. It says that we are going to go back in for him in January. It said a few weeks ago we are willing to co copy Chelsea's structure. He was our number one priority target during the summer transfer window. The main explanation why we didn't get him is because we wasn't willing to meet Borussia Dortmund's asking price. Dortmund wanted... A substantial £108 million. But he said a few times during the summer transfer window that the personal terms had been agreed and the agent fees had been agreed. But we just couldn't come to an agreement on an actual fee. Now, during the summer transfer window, Fabrizio Romano and Christian Vark was talking a lot about the Jadon Sancho transfer saga. But Michael Zorg and Lucien Favre and Sebastian Kell all said during the summer that Sancho will end up staying at Dortmund, which he did do because Dortmund said to us that we had until the 10th of August to sign the player and we obviously missed out on that deadline. But yeah, Sancho made an admission recently saying that it has been hard for him so far this season. He did recently score in Dortmund's 3-0 win against Club Brugge. This is his fourth season now with Borussia Dortmund. Analysing the vast majority of his career with Dortmund, he's been very consistent. He's got a contract with Dortmund till 2023. You know, Borussia Dortmund only paid £8 million for him from Man City. Sancho did endure two years at Man City, but the main explanation he left Manchester City is because he didn't get assured any first-team opportunities. And before he was at City, he was at Watford. Don't forget, we was willing to offer him the number seven shirt. Uh, Rashford, I think, has been talking a lot with him. But there's a good chance he could still leave next year. Now, Erling Haaland, he's also been another player on our agenda. It says we could go in for him next year. Michael Zorgas said, though, they are planning to keep Haaland for the future, Dortmund. Haaland's got a £68 million release clause, but that doesn't become active until the summer of 2022. Now, I said it was a shame that we missed out on Haaland back in January because it would have been an Ole Gunnar Solskjaer type signing. You know, Solskjaer knows the player well. Solskjaer was the one that gave him his debut at just the age of 16 at Mulder. Back in December, Solskjaer and Woodward met up with Haaland in Norway. The main explanation Haaland didn't co come in because of our inconsistency and at that point we had no Champions League football to offer. So yeah, Dortmund ended up getting him back in January. Dortmund paid just £17 million for him and he's got a contract with Dortmund till 2024. Now, Jack Grealish, it's also said that we revived our interest in him. We was in for him during the summer transfer window, but Villa said that they wanted around £80 million. And that put Man United off. And we also had element of concerns about where he would fit in the team. Now, was it earlier on this season, Grealish signed a five-year contract with Aston Villa? Up until this point, he spent the entirety of his career with Aston Villa as Jack Grealish. He obviously now plays on that left-hand side. Now, there's been a few centre-halves on our agenda, as you all know. Daya Upiamikano, he's been one on our agenda. I think we're going to go in for him next summer because next summer he's, really, he's going to be available for £36 million or something like that. That's when his release clause becomes active. And he's confirmed he'll be leaving RB Leipzig next summer. 
Liverpool have also been interested in him recently. The main explanation Liverpool have been interested is because Liverpool have Virgil van Dijk out with a serious injury. They've also got Joe Gomez out. Bayern Munich were interested in Dyer up Yamikano, but it turns out that they can't afford him. He's enjoyed a good three years or so at RB Leipzig. RB Leipzig only paid around £9 million for him from Red Bull Salzburg. Uh, David Carmo from Braga, he's been another centre-half on our agenda. Uh, Dan Axel Zagidu, he's been another centre-half on our agenda. But yeah, I'm hoping that Man United can probably make around two signings in the January transfer window. Then obviously next summer we'll look to make more. But Man United need a centre-half and we need a right winner. They are the two priorities. Solskjaer made a, made a prediction ahead of the January transfer window. This was in his press conference yesterday. And he's expecting a quiet draft. January transfer window because he's happy with our current squad. We're also going to focus on the outgoings next year as well as the incomings because there is still Deadwood at the football club that we do need to get rid of. Now I think next year we'll be looking to get rid of Jesse Lingard. We'll be also looking to get rid of Phil Jones, Marcus Rojo, Sergio Romero, you know, Sergio Romero is now our third choice goalkeeper. I think uh, we could offload Matic because Matic has actually lost his place in the team. He's behind the likes of McTomin, Way and Fred. Uh, we could possibly sell Juan Mata next year. You know, do you think we could sell Daniel James next year? Because he's been out of form and his appearances now at Man United are limited. Despite that, though, he says he's still happy at the football club. Uh, there's obviously been rumours of Brandon Williams going out on loan in January because, uh, obviously, Brandon Williams is now our third-choice left-back following the arrival of Alex Tellez. And a lot of United fans are expecting Paul Pogba to leave the football club next year. And I expect Agarlo to leave the club when his loan expires in January. So there you go. Now, like I've said, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer needs more backing at the football club. He hasn't been backed enough as Manchester United manager. And he revealed a few times during the summer transfer window that he was very infuriated with the board. But the, the board has been one of the biggest problems at the club for a lot of years. The board haven't backed any of our managers that we've had since Alex Ferguson retired. You know, Moyes hasn't, wasn't backed enough, Van Gaal wasn't backed enough, Mourinho wasn't backed enough and Solskjaer has not been backed enough and our recruitment policy has been poor for several years. Solskjaer could still be Manchester United manager um, in the new year because a lot of pressure would have eased off him recently because we've been in good form. You know, we've won our last three games in a row in all competitions. And like I've already said to you, there's quite a few issues that Solskjaer needs to solve at the club. He's obviously got to solve the Paul Popper issue. He's got to identify his best 11 because I don't think Solskjaer knows his best 11. The lineup we went with against Bissaccia was one of our strongest 11. If we'd have put Paul Pogba there instead of Fred, then that would have been our actual best eleven. I think he needs to select the right formation. You know, Solskjaer has gone a lot with that 4-2-3-1 formation since he got appointed in as Man United manager. But in like the big games, he's gone with the 3-5-2. A few times he's gone with that 4-3-3 formation. This is his second full season as Manchester United manager. And I always said, didn't I, this season was always going to be big for Solskjaer. And I said he's got to exceed his expectations if he is to remain Man United manager. And I said if we could finish in the top four this season and if we could win a trophy... That would represent a very, very good season for Man United and then that would give us something to build on. Next month, 
it will be Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's two-year anniversary at the club because he's been Man United manager now for almost two years. We appointed him in in December 2018. He's been permanent Man United manager since March 2019. And he has got a contract with a football club until 2022. And he's managed over 100 games for Man United in all competitions. You know... But, you know, we've had some good results this season. You know, we had a good result recently against Istanbul Basaksehir, beating them by four goals to one. We also had a good result against RB Leipzig, beat them 5-0. Had a good result against PSG, beat them 2-1. We've been very, very dominant in Europe, but we need to replicate that more in the league. And obviously the performances have got to match the results. That's very essential. You know, we had a good result against Everton in the league, beating them 3-1, and Everton are a pretty decent outfit. But the bad results, obviously, you know, the 3-1 loss against Palace on the opening day, the 6-1 hammering against Tottenham, the 1-0 loss to Arsenal quite a few weeks ago, and the 2-1 loss to Istanbul Basaksehir in Turkey. So it's up and down, isn't it, really? You know, we're currently sitting like, what is it, 10th from the Premier League, we know that's nowhere near good enough to our standards. Now, obviously, there has been a lot of talks of Mauricio Potocino replacing Ole Gunnar Solskjaer at the football club. Obviously, he's been the favourite to take over. But he actually said recently that Man United will have to act soon, you know, if they want Potocino in. Masmiliano Lee Greeno, he's been another manager on our agenda. Uh, Julian Nagelsmann, you know, it said a few weeks ago he was on our agenda, but we haven't really got the structure to keep sacking managers, and it wouldn't really solve a lot anyway if we did sack Solskjaer. I think the main explanation is still Manchester United manager is because he's a club legend, and reflecting on that, our board have softened their stance on him. But disregarding him being a club legend, I think he would have been sacked by now. You know, Fletcher now on all he's been at the club, he's learned quite a bit and he's gained managerial experience. Manchester United is the third club in his managerial career. Obviously, before he was with us, he was at Mould, Mulder, won a few Norwegian titles at Mulder. And before he was at Mulder, he was at Cardiff. He enjoyed a very, very short tenure with Cardiff. The main explanation he got sat from Cardiff is because he ended up getting Cardiff relegated, didn't he? But yeah, I've taken positives from his tenure. Ollie has spent over £200 million since he came to the club and he's made some good signings. We've also seen a lot of players leave the club since he got recommended in. Um, he showed a lot of tactical flexibility in a lot of the big games. He did well last season in his first full season because he got us qualification for the Champions League. Also got us third and he guided us to three semi-finals. I also like the way he has promoted the youth. And we've had some very, very good periods under him, you know. We're enjoying a good period now. You know, went on a 19-game unbeaten run in all competitions, was it, last season. We was 14 unbeaten in the Premier League. And did well in that three-month period when he was the interim manager. Now, in the last eight years, you know, Man United have been inconsistent, you know, with being playing catch-up. You know, we've spent over £1 billion on players in the last eight years and we've recruited over 30 players in since Ferguson left. Now, people will say, reflect on the money we've spent, you know, we should be in much more of a commanding position than we're in. You know, we've obviously had different managers with different philosophies in the last eight years. We've sacked three managers since Ferguson left and that was David Moyes. Sacked him after like eight and a half, nine months. He enjoyed the shortest tenure at the club. We finished seventh under the David Moyes era, lowest we've finished in the Premier League era. You know, we sacked Louis van Gaal after two years, despite him winning the FA Cup. And we sacked Jose Mourinho after two and a half years, despite him winning the Europa League, the League Cup and the Community Shield in his first season. The main explanations why we ended Mourinho is because he didn't get on with the board. We pointed him in too late, that's another reason. And 
he had disputes with the top players, didn't he? Where we haven't won the Premier League for eight years. So we haven't won it since 2013. Now, these players at Manchester United that have, impre that have impressed me this season. Uh, Marcus Rashford, he's really, really impressed me. There's been a couple of games where he has looked off the pace, you know, against West Brom he looked off the pace, but he wasn't fully fit against West Brom because he'd just come back from a shoulder problem. But he put a very, very good performance out against Bissakshi, you know, he started on that right wing. Will Man United keep Rashford on that right wing? He doesn't really play there though, a lot of the time he plays on that left-hand side. But in general, I think he's, he's more effective out wide than he is playing centrally. Rashford scored a few goals in the league this season. He scored a hat-trick in the Champions League against RB Leipzig. Became the second Man United player to score a hat-trick as a substitute. He also scored late on against Paris. That was the second time he'd done that. Rashford has been part of the club for several years. He turned 23 a few weeks ago and he's been at United since the age of seven. And he's been in our senior squad since 2016. Now, I've also been very, very impressed with Bruno Fernandes. Bruno Fernandes is the best signing I think we've made since Ferguson retired. A lot of Man United fans will agree on that. Fernandes has 21 goals in 35 games for Man United and he's provided around 15 assists. He's been at the football club now for almost a year. We paid €55 million Euros for him from Sporting Lisbon back in January. And he's got a contract with Man United until 2025. Last season won Premier League Player of the Month twice. Also won some at Busby Player of the Year award. Bruno Fernandes recently scored twice against Basaccia. He... Scored twice against Everton, also got an assist. Scored the retaken penalty against West Brom. So, disregarding Bruno Fernandes, we probably would be in a worse position than we are in. You know, and we need another Bruno Fernandes type signing in January, don't we? Solskjaer has admitted that Bruno Fernandes needs a rest, but it's going to be difficult to see how we'll cope without him in the team. Now, I think uh, Donny van der Beek, he's also recently um, impressed me. He's hardly played, though, like I've mentioned. So, like I've said earlier on, he needs to start tomorrow against Southampton. Uh, because, as you all know, Pob and McTomway are available for tomorrow. So, Donny van der Beek's got to start. Juan Mata, now, he's impressed me in some of his games this season. You know, he did well in both our Cowbell Cup games against Luton and Brighton. He also did well in the Chelsea game. He did well in the Everton game. Not the Everton game, sorry, the Newcastle game. But there's been some games this season where it hasn't been so consistent. You know, Juan Mata's had a good career at Man United. He's enjoyed a good six years or so now at the club. He has 50 goals in all competitions and he's made over 200 appearances in all competitions. We got one matter for £40 million from Chelsea back in 2014. Earlier on this season, he rejected an £18 million a year contract offered to play in Sergio Arabia. My element of concern about matter, he has lost that yard of pace. Now, I've also been very, very impressed with Fred. Fred has shown good attacking intent. He's won the ball back well. His defensive contribution's been good. He's had a couple of bad games this season. Fred has enjoyed a few years now at Man United. We got him for like £47 million from Shakhtar Donetsk. And Fred's got a contract with us until 2023. Now, I've been impressed with Alex Telles so far. Um, he's played, what, three games for the club in all competitions. He's played twice in the Champions League and played once in the Premier League. Uh, we got Telles for like 15.4 million with add-ons included. I was also impressed with Luke Shaw before he got 
uh, this hamstring injury. He did get two assists in the, the last two games he played uh, before he got this injury. Uh, Luke Shaw is out for four to six weeks. That's what uh, Solskjaer said. So the only element of concern about Luke Shaw, he is injury prone. Now, Harry Maguire, I've also been very, very impressed with him. I really, really have been impressed with Harry Maguire. Um, he's been very effective in the air. His defensive contribution's been good. And he's rejuvenated himself because he did have early season troubles. He got sent off in England's 1-0 defeat to Denmark early on in the season. He sustained a few knocks. He bruised his foot uh, during the international break not so long ago. And he had that instant in Greece before the start of the season. Harry Maguire, he's our current captain. He's the most expensive centre-half in the world at the moment because we got him in a deal worth £80 million. Pounds. Now, Victor Lindelof, he's impressed me in some games this season, but I've still got my reservations about him because he's nowhere near on the same level as Harry Maguire. And Juan Bissaka, he's also impressed me. You know, he's shown good attacking intent. He's, you know, put some good crosses into the box. Don't forget he scored his first goal for the football club in our 4-1 win against Newcastle earlier on in the season. It was actually his first senior goal. You know, this is Anwan Basaka's second season at the club. We got him in a deal worth £50 million from Palace in the summer of 2019. Now, David De Gea, he's also really, really impressed me. Uh, I said David De Gea will remain our number one this season. Being a long servant of the club, this is David De Gea's 10th season at Manchester United. Uh, maybe Dean Henson will be our number one at some point. Uh, there's obviously been rumours of Dean Henderson going out on loan in January, but Solskjaer said he wants Dean Henderson. He want, uh, He said, sorry, Dean Henderson wants to stay. And he said that he wants to play for Man United. He hasn't featured in the Premier League this season, Dean Henderson, but he made his Champions League debut against Basakshir in Turkey, played in both our Cowboy Cup games, and he made his England debut earlier on in the month. Now, there's obviously some players at Man United that haven't impressed me. You know, Pop has been very disappointing. Matic has been disappointing, but he hardly plays. Daniel James has been disappointing. Anthony Martial's been disappointing uh, prior to the game against Basakshia. He was very, very good against Istanbul Basakshia, but prior to that, he's enjoyed a pretty poor start to the season. But Solskjaer explained why he struggled this season, Martial, and that's mainly down to the three-match suspension he had in the Premier League because he did get sent off in our 6-1 defeat to Tottenham, but he shouldn't have been sent off. That's the thing. You know, but he was playing on that left hand side against Pisacci and put a good performance out and Oli giving his verdict on him playing on the left hand side and he said he's happy that he's back on that left hand side. But a lot last season he was playing centrally, wasn't he, Anthony Martial? Because we did give him that number nine shirt. He scored twenty three goals for the club last season. And he was very good in his debut season under Louis Van Gaal. Martial's enjoyed a good five years or so at the football club. So they are the ones that have um, disappointed me. So yeah. So anyway guys, that's everything to update you today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always. And take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.